Hey guys, it's Lazarus here, and in today's video, we'll be discussing the 10 best tank mates for your Emperor Tetras. They're also known as the Kerai Tetras and the Royal Tetras, just so you know. Without any further ado, let's get started. Now first, before we get into these 10 tank mates, you need to know that when you're choosing your tank mates, that the fish will require a low pH, just like the Emperors. And then they'll also need to be tropical and to be a slow moving Tetra. So Emperor Tetras are a bit slow moving and they can't get to their food as fast, so just keep that in mind. But now let's get into the 10 tank mates. Okay, so number one on the list is the Cardinal Tetras. So they were very popular, attractive aquarium fish, especially for the beginner aquarists out there. So that's usually a fish that gets people right into the hobby. Now that in appearance, they'll have a red body with a neon blue strap going all across. So that's why they can kind of glow in aquariums, which makes them so attractive. And they are so vibrant compared to most fish. So they're really unique and they're super easy to keep. They'll require a low pH though. They love the black water, but they also will um, be able to thrive in a bit of a higher pH from 6.5 to 7.5 um, in crystal clear water as well. For the best coloration, I recommend black water. To lower the pH, you can put driftwood in or you can put tea in it too. So with the temperatures with these guys, they'll inhabit any temperatures from 22 to 26 degrees Celsius, your usual range, and they only get to about four centimeters. So they are quite a cool size fish for your tank and they are, they are schooling fish and they need to be in a big school. So I recommend six or more minimum. But if you're only gonna have it temporary, you can have a few, but you'll need more in the future. Now next up is the Harley Quinn Rasboras. They go great with your Emperor Tetras due to their peaceful community vibe. They will school around the tank. They do have a really unique body. To be honest, I don't know why they're called the Harley Quinn Rasbora. I don't know what resemblance they do have to Harley Quinn, but they do look quite cool. And especially in schools, they'll be really vibrant as the more you have, the more vibrant they'll look. So feed them some nice nutritious foods and they will need to be in groups of four or more, but really big groups are best. So I recommend a minimum tank size of a 20 gallons because they like to be in larger groups and make sure if you do have a 20 gallon or bigger that you have a group of six or more for the best results now also with these guys uh, they're not fast eaters so they'll easily get to the food um, while your Emperor Tetris are getting that too. So you won't need to worry about that too much and the Harley Quinn Reservoir is definitely a great way to go super easy to find super hardy and a bulletproof fish Next up, we have the adorable Corridor's catfish. You can't escape their cuteness. They will have a really cute personality. They'll look at you all really cute and beg for food. Um, they are a scavenger, so they will scavenge at the bottom of the tank. So you need to make sure you have a fine substrate as they like to dig their little nozzles into the substrate. So I recommend sand, but you can also have fine pebbles. Make sure any gravel you have doesn't have sharp edges as well, or else they will hurt the Corridorus catfish. So the Corridorus catfish are another schooling fish. They like to be in groups of five or more and they do amazing in schools. They'll group together and they will go as a gang looking for those food scraps. So when your fish drops the food, it goes to the bottom. Corridor's catfish will get there later. You can't rely on them all the time on eating all the food scraps. You'll need to feed them algae wafers now and then, along with other nutritious meaty foods as well. So definitely give the Corridor's catfish a try. Super common. I recommend the bronze quarries as it's um, a fish that I have the most experience with and they're probably the easiest and most common Corridors out there. You can also get the albinos, pandas. There's a heap of varieties. Try them out. Give them a go. They'll go great with your Emperor Tetras. So they won't cross each other because the Corridor's catfish are always at the bottom of the tank. So give the Corridor's catfish a try. Now next up is a staple fish you probably already know. Next up we have the platy fish. You can't escape the amazing coloration on these beautiful fish. So they're really easy to find, super easy to breed. All you need to do to breed these guys is have a male and a female in the tank and bam. Make sure they're in water and they'll be breed like crazy. Every month they'll drop like 20 babies. So keep that in mind. Um, I recommend a minimum tank size of 20 gallons when breeding platy fish. So that's just my recommendation, but you don't have to. You can They can go all the way down to 10 gallons if you're just keeping them for fun. Now they do great with the Emperor Tetris because they're both similar size. Platys get a bit bigger, but um, they both inhabit the same temperatures and the platys can go down a little bit lower than 7.0 sometimes. So I recommend the variated platy for the lower pHs. Um, you can get all sorts of varieties and colors out there. It's not, it's not even funny. You can get any color there is out there, pick a color and they have them somewhere in the world. So definitely give the platy fish a try. They're super fun to keep 
and they're bulletproof. So definitely give them a go. So next up is another really funky bottom dwelling fish. Next up we have the yo-yo loach. They're also called the Pakistani loach. The reason why they're called the yo-yo loach is if you look at the patterning on their body, it looks like the words yo-yo. Sometimes it'll be yo-yo-yo, but that's how they got the name. And it's a really interesting fish. They do have incredible personalities. And something I really love about this fish is that they do like to play dead a lot. So you might see your um, Pakistani loach lying on its side, like on a leaf in your live plants or just on the bottom of the tank. It's not dead, trust me. It's just sleeping. They sleep in the weirdest positions. I've thought my Pakistani loach was dead a ton of times. So just <laughs> keep that in mind. They won't be dead, trust me. And make sure you have a tight lid with the Pakistani loach though, because if you do have some aggressive Pakistani loaches with your peaceful ones if you do happen to get those uh, very rare aggressive bullies. Your nice ones will probably jump out from stress so monitor your Pakistani loach and if there's some fighting going on you might need to separate them so that's um, the downside with this but they won't bother the emperor tetras due to how they'll stay to the bottom most of the time they'll sometimes go to the top occasionally just to get some snails up there but they're a snail eater so they'll eat all your snails they're probably the best snail eater out there so if you have some snails in your tank don't get them um, as if you want to keep those snails because you're going to say goodbye to them straight away when you add the pakistani loach to the tank so Bear that in mind because if you love your pet snails you got in your aquarium, then they're just going to get destroyed by the Pakistani loach. So yeah, keep that in mind. That's some, another great thing about them. They are snail eaters. So if you do have an infestation of aquarium snails, then um, go get the Pakistani loach and they'll control it. So otherwise, give the Pakistani loach a try. Super easy. Give them some algae wafers and um, sinking pellets now and then. Really anything really and give them a go. Our next up is the stunning CPDs. They're also known as the Celestial Pearl Danios or the Galaxy Rasboras. They have a beautiful coloration. They'll normally be blue with a bit of white dotting on the body. And they'll have a bit of reddish all over the body as well. So there can be all sorts of patternings on them. So give them a go. And they're not as common as most of the other fish on this list. So you will need to look a bit on the internet at local breeders and that sort of stuff. Now they are a bit pricey here in Australia, at least to what I know. I recommend you get them from like aquarium clubs or uh, local breeders. They will give it a better price on those Celestial Pearl Danios sometimes. So yeah, definitely do your research before you go get these. But they do great with the Emperor Tetras because they're not a fast swimmer, so they won't get to the food before the Emperor Tetras. And they'll also survive the low pHs along with the higher temperatures. So they're a great match with your Emperor Tetras, plus they'll look really cool together. You can get like the black Emperor Tetras with the Celestial Pearl Danios. There'll be a lot of action in the tank. It'll be so cool. So give them both a go. Give the Celestial Pearl Danios a try and see what you think. Now next is a fish that's not really by its name, the Angelfish. So you may think when you first hear this name, oh, they're a really peaceful, angelic fish. Well, they are angelic, but their personality is not very angelic. So sometimes when you get those males, uh, they do tend to get quite aggressive when matured. So when you do have your Emperor Tetras, make sure you have a big school or else the um, angelfish might pick on one by its own. So if you have a big group, then they won't really bother trying to attack the Emperor Tetras. So angelfish do get quite big. So you will need a minimum tank size of 40 gallons, which I think is 160 liters. So angelfish do grow to about 15 centimeters long and about 12 centimeters tall. So you can see with their body structure, they have really tall dorsal fin and a really tall anal fin, along with a peduncle fin that's kind of like a lace. So it's really cool. And um, they are a cichlid though, so um, that's a really cool fact about them. They sh you should find them easily anywhere. They're really easy to find and they're easy to breed. A great beginner option for your breeding list. So give them a go if you want to breed some new fish and there's different varieties out there. So give any variety a go. They're all really cool and they're all beautiful. Number seven are the angelfish. So this fish is a little like the Celestial Pearl Danios. They're quite related. Next up, we have the Emerald Rasboras. So they are a beautiful aquarium fish, just like the CPDs. Now they do have quite a fascinating coloration, very different to the rest of the fish. So they will have a blue body with a bit of a white gray sort of striping, you could call it. It's a bit weird, but if you search up photos, that's what they look like. And um, they're a really cool purple coloration. They're a medium swimmer, so they're not the, a fast 
swimmer like most Danios. So definitely give them a go because they'll go great with your Emperor Tetras. Now your Emperor Tetras will love the Emerald Reservoirs. They will cross over each other, but they will group up a little or they'll just leave each other alone. So it's that, that or the other and they're both really good options. So give the Emerald Reservoirs a go. Not as commonly found as most of the other fish. Once again, find some local breeders or do your research on the internet to find the best deals with the Emerald Reservoirs. Otherwise, they're actually a fairly recently discovered fish. So they're quite a cool little one to have in your aquarium and people will love watching them swim around when you have guests over. Now next up is quite a peaceful barb. We have the Odessa barbs. Now they are a really beautiful barb. They will have a kind of a multicolor coloration. They'll be really bright and they will reflect easily in the water. So they look amazing and you can get a few different like patterns of coloration out there, but usually they're the um, more like the greeny yellow and orangey sort of uh, mix, but they are quite peaceful and they only grow to about six centimeters. So similar to the Emperor Tetras, Odessa bars will hang out from the bottom to the middle of the tank. So they will cross over the Emperor Tetras, but they'll leave the Emperor Tetras alone most of the time. Males tend to be a bit more aggressive. So I recommend if you, you have more females than males so that the males will be occupied on the females, not the Emperor Tetras. Make sure you keep them well fed too, or else the Odessa barbs might pick on the Emperor Tetras. So just, you know, in general, keep your fish well fed, especially the Emperor Tetras too. So give the Odessa barbs a try. Nothing wrong with having a bit of extra coloration in the tank, and a bit more brightness too. Now, last but certainly not least, we have the Pearl Gouramis. Now they are quite bigger than your Emperor Tetras. Pearl Gouramis grow to about 15 centimeters, but that doesn't stop them from being a peaceful fish going great with your Emperor Tetras. Even in my experience, I've had lots of success keeping Emperor Tetras and Pearl Gouramis together. So Pearl Gouramis are a stunning aquarium fish and when you take a first look at them, you're gonna wanna get them because with the Pearl Gouramis, they'll have a pearl coloration on them, but then they'll also have some spotty and all different types of spangling on their body too. So give them a go because they're really easy to keep as well. You will we'll need a bit of a bigger tank, 20 gallons or more, 30 gallons is preferred. Uh, I recommend 20 gallons for only one Pearl Gourami, and then if you can have two or more, 30 gallons or more. So that's my rule and um, I think you'll have lots of fun keeping them. They got also really great personalities and they can be by themselves, but they can also be in groups too. Males will have the red bellies and the females will have a silver belly. They are an awesome combo with your Emperor Tetras and it'll just bring out such a coloration in your tank that your friends are gonna wanna watch the tank for hours. Well, there you have the 10 best tank mates for your Emperor Tetras. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content just like this. Have a wonderful day, everyone. I'll see you all in the next video.